بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المسلين أبي القاسم محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين الغر الميامين المظلومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, my beloved uh, brothers and sisters, respected viewers. You are watching another show on Imam Hussein TV, uh, T3 Teach, Talk, and Thrive. Inshallah, I'll be your host uh, for this evening, Ali Burji. And with us tonight, we have a quite familiar face in Imam Hussein TV, Sayyid Mohsin Shah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nice yes. to see you. Likewise. It's been a long time, I must say. Allah, it has been indeed. It has been. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It's good to, um, to reunite uh, under uh, uh, Imam Hussein TV. Indeed. And inshallah, today we have a quite exciting topic to discuss, indeed, which yeah. is the Islamic Seminary, otherwise yes. known as the Hausa. Yes. Yeah. And inshallah, since uh, you yourself are a Talibul Hausa student, <laughs> I, I believe Hawza. you are as well, Mr. <laughs> Burji. Let's look. Shy away I've now. experienced it. I, I wouldn't consider myself a Talib. Okay, I've been no. to Hawza, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, in the Najaf. blessed land of Najaf. Yes? Najaf al Ashraf. Uh, biggest blessing in my life. The uh, best two and a half years I've ever had. Okay. And probably will ever have in dunya. Inshallah, you have many more years to come in Najaf, inshallah. Inshallah. Bidnillahi ta'ala. Now, obviously, this is a very important topic. A lot of yes. people may not be aware of what exactly is the Hawza. Or, uh, how it's built, what it consists of, who who goes there, who attends, what's the aim and purpose of it. So inshallah, I would like to shed some light through um, your experience and obviously through uh, mine as well. Um, inshallah, uh, we would like to begin with um, the most common question, which what is Hawza exactly? A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Well, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise be to Rasulullah, his final messenger And also Allah. blessings be showered upon the Rasulullah And blessings be showered upon the Ahlul Bayt, the Holy Household Which brought us the true knowledge of Islam The Hawza is the, known as the Islamic Seminary It is a university or a college where people are invited to come join and they are invited to gain what we can say are scholarships to study Islamic texts as well as Islamic sciences. Um, these seminaries are mainly headed by Mujtahideen and Maraja. Just for the sake of uh, clarifying what's a Mujtahid and what's a Maraja for any of our viewers who may not know. A Mujtahid is one who has uh, studied to a level of ijtihad uh, in fiqh. In this context, we say fiqh. Meaning fiqh jurisprudence. In the uh, jurisprudence. So someone who has studied jurisprudence as well as uh, principles of jurisprudence, how to derive law. So someone who studied law and how to derive law at a level which is arguably equivalent to a PhD, maybe higher. You can be a mujtahid in other subjects as well. Um, so it's like you're an expert. But when we the common, the default position, and what we say is like, you know, the Logatul Am, is with the Fuqaha, to those who've done Asul Fiqh and Fiqh, uh, the jurisprudential law and also principles of jurisprudence, they have the abilities and the skills to derive law for themselves. That's a mujtahid. A marja is one who is at a higher position for, he is followed by others. He is a source of elevation as source of um, copying um, his um, professional Islamic jurisprudential opinion on on uh, on a um, hadith or you can say on a subject matter in re in uh, referring to in reference to what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants you to do. That is a marja. Okay, well said. so marjas, uh, the maraja, and mujtahideen are normally the heads of the hawza, um, and they um, discuss with other <coughs> organizations sometimes 
on the syllabus on what to teach you. And inshallah, if you join, um, you know, you will get to study many, many topics and subjects in the Hawza. Speaking of uh, studying many topics and subjects, could you uh, name some of them? Definitely. I mean, um, so when you join Hawza in your first year, depending where you go, you may have a language course. So they'll update, they will try and teach you the language, the local language, mm -hmm. or the language of what the Hawza teaches in. For some it's Fusha, for some it's Farsi, for others it's English. It just depends which Hawza you go to. Not all houses offer a language course. So you do a language course first. Once, your language course, once you've done your language course and probably some preliminary um, subjects such as theology, maybe uh, fiqh as well, of a marja. So the Rasala Amalia, uh, you know, the jurisprudential law book of a, of a, um, of a marja, a grand ayatollah. You go through that. So you get understanding of what Islamic law is. You get understanding of uh, theological discussions and debates on the existence of God, uh, the existence of prophets, imama, uh, qiyama. Um, also, you probably study um, a little bit of Quran, to read, how to recite Quran, to make sure your Arabic and your recitation is proper. And then after you've done that, you go into your first, like what we call, muqaddamati, or your first couple of years, uh, your first year, so a couple of subjects. So you study um, fiqh, you'll study what we what we, we all love as a house student, Sarf Mantic. and Nahu. Oh, Sarf and Nahu. Yeah, which I is. you were going to say logic. Mantik, Mantik, you also study. I study Mantik as well. So, uh, Sarf and Nahu, you, you study. Um, <laughs> so, in English, we call that syntax and morphology. Uh, so, yes. you understand how Arabic sentences are formed and what role each word plays in a sentence. Um, you study Mantik, logic. So, that lo you they will teach you logic, which is. How to understand the sentence, um, how to determine something from a sentence, and how to actually create definitions, is what they'll teach you in in mantiq. And also something I'd like to add is that Subhanallah, by studying sarf and nahu, you truly recognize the the blessing of Arabic. Indeed. What do I mean by that is why Allah <laughs> Subhanahu wa Taala chose this language Definitely. to be. Definitely. I I I'll tell you something really quickly. How many words are there in the Chinese language? Roughly about 60,000. How many words are there in the English language? Taqriban 600,000. How many words are there in the Arabic language? 12 million. And that is thanks to the conjugation. That is thanks to Sarf and Nahu. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala probably chose Arabic as a language that he wanted to portray his message in simply because of the beautiful mathematical sciences behind the Arabic language as well as the diverse vocabulary that is available, that you take, you and I know this, but, but to the viewers, you take a word and it's like you just put it through a machine and you know, when you conjugate the word, you know, it will mean this, it will mean that. Okay, for example, let's take, uh, we'll, we'll, our teachers used to say, you always use the violent words like qatala or dharaba, you know, but let's say sajada, he, he did sujood, sajada, then you have the word sajid, someone who does sujood, Masjid, a place of sujood And then you could do, like when you conjugate it even further To the past tense, the present tense, the future tense um, And you conjugate it to a male, a female, two males, two females A group of males, a group of females, a group of females with one male in it You know, the, you're smiling because you know exactly what I'm talking about <laughs> Subhanallah, it's so deep and but that's that, the, that is the beauty of the Arabic language So, it's yeah, sarf and nahu, mantik, uh, aqaid uh, most important Very So what no, you believe In English What would be the I think the best way To uh, translate it Is theology Theology So what do you believe And why do you believe in it You believe in God Why do you believe in God You know How do you challenge uh, God's existence And how do you um, You know Come up with The arguments That God does exist So how do you refute These arguments mm. And how do you come to Yaqeen And the conclusion That there is a God And then and That God is one or two Multiple or singular Tawheed Is that God just or not just? Adil Idala And then You go on to uh, Prophethood That this this God Has he brought prophets? Why has he brought prophets? And also we go on to Imama And also the resurrection after that At the end So that is in Aqa'id In theology um, You'd also You know study Maybe a bit of tafsir Of the Quran you study Quranic sciences Now what's the difference between Tafsir and Quranic sciences? Tafsir is what we call the 
Explanation. Explanation. I think <coughs> I'm trying to remember the, the, the proper word. I believe it's exegesis. The exegesis yes. of the Quran is the translation of, of it's that. It's derived from the um, Greek word exegesis. Yes. Which, which means what? Uh, explanation. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> yeah. So you had the exegesis. exegesis yeah. And then um, you have Quranic sciences. What is Quranic sciences? Quranic sciences is the study of what the Quran actually is. What is the Quran in its, in its original form? Because it has, in a way, the Quran has been deconfragmented and diluted and simplified and simplified and simplified to bring down to earth. And what we have is a book with writing on it. Mm. But that is the most simplified version of what is originally what it is. So what is it originally? You know, and inshallah, when you go study Quranic sciences, you know what it is originally, using proof from the Quran to tell us what the Quran is in the heavens, never mind what, what we have, yeah. this material Quran that we have today. Uh, so, you know, that's a really interesting subject and you will learn that. And inshallah, you go further in, into, into other topics such as hadith studies. Um, you will go into rajal studies further on. Inshallah, and and many more topics which you can choose history, um, you can choose social sciences. Uh, That's the beauty of Hausa that there isn't a fixed curriculum. That if if you obviously the, you've got the basics, the yes. foundation. But once you've passed the point of foundation, then you can choose what you'd like to master your skills at. And it, I think at the beginning you have your what you have to do. What you call muqaddimat and satuh. Yes, you have to do them. Well, you need them. They're essential. Yeah, those you can't are, are proceed further if you those don't know. Are, I think those those are the skills the you those are the skills you need mm. uh, to actually really really excel and actually not just excel but enjoy. Now you know I really it increases enjoy. the depth of your understanding of the creation Definitely. of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Definitely, and uh, it's beautiful. Also, it helps you explain things to people, whether they're Muslim or exactly. uh, from other other faiths exactly. or other sects. And, and it's beautiful as well, especially when you combine that um, uh, the understanding of the creation and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put things in place and the rulings and regulations. It makes much more sense with regards to why things are the way they are, for Indeed. example. And Indeed. these are important questions that everyone has. And they have to be explained to them. Now, with that being said, uh, another important question that people should uh, really understand is why should anyone attend uh, the Islamic seminaries or the Hausa? Why should we attend the Hausa? So if you allow me, um, I'll just uh, recite a, a hadith or two in regards to gaining knowledge and what the Ahlul Bayt have said. I've got them on my phone. Me, please. Thank you. So, from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Sorry, Imam Bakr alayhi salam. He says, try to learn knowledge because learning it is a good action and study is itself a worship. Subhanallah. This is from Bukhar Anwar, uh, volume 78, page 189. This is what Imam Bakr alayhi salam has said. Furthermore, we have Imam Ali. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. The, city, the door to the city of knowledge. What does he say? The one who seeks for knowledge is like a warrior. In the cause of religion for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's Bahar Anwar, volume 1, page 179. And just one more, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, Try to obtain knowledge and ornament it with patience and dignity, and be humble for the one who learns knowledge from you. And that is of Al Qafi, volume 1, page 36. So we see there's a great importance in learning knowledge. Our Imma have focused and told us so much to focus on knowledge. In fact, if you look at our Imma, what did they do for most of their lives? Was teach. We are known as the Jafri school of thought. Why? Imam Jafar Sadiq salam, excelled at what, we, what was known as the University of Medina. Which was established by, it started off with Imam Sajjad, established by Muhammad, uh, Imam Muhammad Bakr alayhi salam. Uh, and then finally Imam Sadiq excelled in it and thousands of students were enrolling and graduating from that university. Unfortunately today we have just ruins of it. But this is what our Imam used to do. They used to teach and, and, and teach us to become experts in different fields of Islamic sciences. Whether it be reciting Quran, whether it be giving fatawa, whether it be improving your moral akhlaq, your, your morality and your ethics. This is what the Imam taught us. And this is why it's so important 
for our community to invest time and to invest money in the Hawza because right now there is a big, big shortage of scholars for the West. MashaAllah, we have many scholars for Iraq. We have many scholars, mashallah, for Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan. All major languages that Muslims speak, alhamdulillah, we have scholars for them, apart from English. In the last 50 years, Muslims have migrated, for whatever reasons, political uh, or non-political, Muslims have migrated to the West. Europe, the Americas, um, the Australasia, Africa. So we have to now provide these people with a means of understanding and gaining the, the religion of Islam. And I ask you this, uh, Mr. Burji. The Ahlul Bayt, are they restricted to the Shia? No. The knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt, is that just for us? Obviously not, for the entire humanity. So we have to, we have to give it to them. That's true. Now, Masha, we have the Arabs doing their bit, we have the Iranians doing their bit, Pakistanis, Indian, everyone's doing their bit, apart from the English, because they don't have any heritage or roots within this religion. So now we have to invest time as, as Westerners and English speakers, we have to go to the houses to learn. And shall we come back to not just improve our community, but improve those who've never heard of Ali ibn Abi Talib, those who've never heard of Rasulullah. We have to do it, it's a duty upon us. Now, with regards to a Westerner wishing to enroll, yes, what do you think, according to your experience, would be uh, the best way to uh, introduce a Westerner into the lifestyle of Hausa? Because as you know yourself, Hausa is not like a university. It's not like a college. It is a school. It is a center of knowledge. But there is a certain lifestyle and expectations from it. It's very demanding, very uh, mentally draining at times. We have to be frank about this. Yes, it is. Yes. Of course, you always pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease in things f for you in life in general. But how do you think would be the best way to prepare a Westerner to enter into the lifestyle of Hausa? I think the best way for a Westerner, let's say someone who's not a Muslim. So the person who hasn't got any links towards an undeveloped country. So let's say an Englishman that wants to go to the Hausa to learn. Um, there are going to be many challenges. Number one is language. Number two is culture. Number three is lifestyle, as in electricity cuts, heat. Um, maybe he'll be subjected to cultural, um, what do you call, traditions that he's never known before. For example, you know, not allowed to shake ladies' hands, not really allowed to speak to women, uh, you know, eating with your right hand, not with your left. Um, other traditions and, and cultural, um, um, what you call them, cultural... Difference? You could say difference. Cultural... Um, Varieties or... What's the word? This is called moral ethical codes okay. that they have. For example, I, you know, here you might be, you might get away with a short sleeve, a, a vest and, and shorts, but in Iraq you're not getting away with wearing one of those, especially it's in the house. It's regarded as unmodest. It yes. wouldn't be, it wouldn't be appropriate for you to walk. Exactly, in the exactly. Like that. So, so a Westerner has to learn these, um, you know, moral traits yeah. and, and and learn these these cultural differences. And so then, wouldn't it be sorry to interrupt you? So wouldn't it be best to establish um, a system in the West to prepare students to go? To the Middle East, we do we do have some establishments here in in the UK, also in the Americas, and maybe there's some in Europe. I know there's some in Denmark, in Germany. Um, we have we have uh, seminaries already set up, so you can begin your in introductory uh, and your preliminary education there, and then go to the more advanced in in the traditional houses which you have in in Iran and in, in Iraq. Um, that is a great way to introduce yourself to Hausa. And they will teach it in the language which is most common uh, to the land. So it will be in the native tongue of, of the country. Mm. Um, but those are, I think, those are limited. You can only do your muqaddamat and your sotuh. You won't be able to go further in uh, to do the, the really, really, let's say the juicy bits. You know, that those you'd have to go to, to you know, the traditional houses and, and, and study there. So th that I think is the only challenge with you know st staying back and not going to somewhere like Iran or Iraq uh, to, to study Hausa. But 
uh, it is a great way and probably is the best way for a Westerner to be introduced to the Hosea lifestyle and to the Hosea syllabus. Don't you think that it would be good as well and easier and faster for someone to uh, understand a, a, a culture, a way of life by mixing with, for example, um, Arabs from Iraq? Definitely, 100%. We're not trying to dis discourage people from not going to mm. Iraq or Iran if they haven't got any affiliation or any uh, fam you know, uh, familiarities or any, um, anything in common with these people. We, we definitely encourage people to go. Uh, and engage with the people, engage with the culture. Just know that there are some traditional practices that you may not be familiar with. And, you know, like, for example, we all know the thumbs up here in the UK is fine. You do that in Iran, you're in trouble. You know? Oh, I didn't know that, really. Yes, 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 you're in trouble in Iran if you do that. It's okay. very rude. So to, to get accustomed to these, you know, cultural practices and these cultural traditions, it will take a bit of time, you need a bit of patience. But, alhamdulillah, the reward is, is very, very good, you know, very, very great. Not just the thawab you're getting, not just the sins that you're eradicating, but the knowledge that you're gaining. And I think that's the key thing, that a person should have that thirst for the knowledge. Definitely. Because if you don't, if you have just a thirst for an adventure, that's going to dry out. But if you have a, a, a thirst for knowledge, then subhanAllah, hawza, every day. Hawza, yeah, definitely. Like, I think uh, Imam Ali, he says it the best, Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says there are two types of thirst that are never quenched. One is the you know for dunya and, and for like you know money and, and for materialism, and the other is for knowledge. Oh, that the more you learn, it, and me and you both know this because we've been to the houses and we've studied there. The more you learn, the more you want to learn. You know, it's like it's, it's really weird. It's like the more you put in, the more space it creates for more knowledge to come. It doesn't. It's not like oh, this is my memory bank and it's full now. I can't put any more in. No, you know, the more you learn, the more you want to learn, and, and uh, the skills you acquire to learn more, to read longer to study for longer, to remember more. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's, it's a miracle in itself. SubhanAllah. Um, other, other thing I would like to discuss with you is about a certain misconceptions about Hawza, that it's a boys only um, um, play area, if I may say. Uh, <laughs> but, it's exclusive um, to, to males. Yeah. And no, so, that's not true. Exactly. Now, what, what do we have in place in the West that is available um, for uh, sisters, ladies Okay, for, for sisters uh, doing choir um, With your local um, Hausa If you can with the Hausa If there is uh, If it's a mixed Hausa Or if, it's, if there are any female Only Hausas available in, in the local area uh, In London I think there are a couple uh, definitely in Iraq and in Iran, there are definitely ladies only houses yes, I uh, where, they, where, where they can go and study there yeah. and they don't have to worry about um, you know, the, the facilities uh, that, you know, that, are, uh, that are there or not, not present. They have everything to cater for ladies to go and, and study there. Um, we don't want to even discourage our sisters from going to the Hausa. We are in desperate need of um, female leaders in our community and female scholars in our community yeah. to, ed to educate the ladies because let's be honest there are some topics ladies are not comfortable with discussing with their local male scholar and requires a, f a female and you could say a feminine touch and that's why it's very important that we have females who are active in the community mm. who are lecturing in the community holding classes in the community this can only be done by ladies going to Hausa in the west I do believe we do have some do get in contact with your local mosque and your local house to find out if there are some if you want to study. If not, definitely Iraq and Qom uh, and in Iran definitely they have um, female uh, houses. Now, with regards to house, I just wanted to just discuss a bit of uh, maybe some controversial <laughs> issues. Uh, if I could put it plainly, uh, do you think that there are bad people in house? Bad, hundred percent, hundred percent. Don't think that everyone you meet in Hausa is this pious and God-fearing individual. They, everyone in Hausa are human beings and are subjected to diseases such as jealousy, such as greed, such as hate and envy, such as, you know, displeasure, some, even mis mischief. Um, and let's not forget Unfortunately, in some houses, politics is very, very dominant. Now, this, this politics may be politics of the government, not just the government, but the politics of the houses as well. 
we have our own politics that we have amongst our own communities within the community, uh, politics within the house itself. Maybe certain teachers were trying to get ahead of other teachers to higher positions. You will be subjected to this. You will be subjected to people who are, you know, may tell you one thing, mean another. Me personally, I have gone to one of my teachers who gave me one answer to a, to a query. And I went to another teacher in the same Hausa who gave me the total opposite answer. And there was a clash. There was a clash of um, ideas. There was a clash of um, opinion. Not a clash as in that then the two teachers started to fight. But I'm just saying that I had in my brain, this teacher has said this, the other teacher has said this, and there's been a clash. Of total opposite. That would happen. So there is, there is a, a you know, difference of opinion. Sometimes that can even lead to issues in Hausa. And when you have teachers trying to force their opinion on you, that is wrong. You can't have that in the Hausa. A Hausa is an environment of academia and critical discu uh, discussion where you can criticize and critically analyze any issue, any topic, any theory uh, within the Islamic boundaries with respect academically. And, and absolutely annihilate and slaughter. <laughs> but but the, the thing is, you want to come to Yaqeen. You actually want to, you know, give everything you got against this theory to prove that this theory is correct or to prove that it is incorrect. And yes, we do have some people who are trying to push an agenda in the Hausa. Maybe they want to support a certain theory and, not, and, and discourage another theory, which is, which is wrong. Which you, you, you have to have a very, very open mind and you have to stay awake in Hausa. Just keep, your way, keep yourself away from that. You're there to learn and you're there to accept uh, what you deem to have concluded using logic and using um, research and speaking to many, many people to come to your own, <coughs> derive your own conclusion to any theory that is actually presented to you in Hausa. And at the end of the day, shaitan, Satan, uh, infiltrates every establishment. Yes. Uh, he wouldn't obviously let anyone freely to guide others or yes. be guided himself. Yes. So people should expect that, you know, things occur even in, in the um, purest of places like holy, oh, definitely. holy cities, for example. Definitely. Uh, and by saying that, I remember when I went for the first time ever back in uh, 2014, literally, I thought I was a devil entering the city <laughs> of angels. <laughs> if only I knew better Mashallah. But uh, you learned through that experience Yes, you learned did. But I, I, my personal advice to any Westerner Who would like to indulge in Hausa studies Is if you are going to go to the West uh, Sorry, apologies If you are going to go to Middle East For example, traditional locations Najaf, Karbala, Qom uh, Mashhad. Mashhad Shiraz yes. Any other place, wherever there's houses you must go with zero expectations and yes. especially the way you've been you know uh, accustomed to living just forget about that and just yeah. embrace the change embrace the different something different it is very challenging i mean you're, you're gonna get um you know you're gonna get a smaller room uh maybe there's cracks the hygiene is not the same as you have here in the west um <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't eat food there. from uh, streets just, unless you know yes, who it is. Yes. So yeah, and also yeah, they, they I had a shower with the snake once. Mashallah, mashallah. Did you sleep with the spiders? Sleep with scorpions. Mashallah. Mosquitoes as big Mash. as the ones in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> that's Najaf Hausa for but you. But that's alhamdulillah. That's a blessing because the is struggle, indeed. the struggle, indeed. there's a reward behind it. Definitely, you know? definitely. It toughens you up as a person because I've, I've, without a joke, I've noticed that. We who grow in the West <clears throat> can be a bit softer, if mm -hmm. I can use that terminology. It's softer, mm -hmm. or the description, which it is true. West you see how people in third world countries, and we can go into deeper discussion why they're named third world countries in the first place, but they are tougher because life is tougher in general. Yes. <clears throat> and we, we take so many things for granted. We, we do spoil ourselves, whether through you know, society, through parents, through um, the luxury... Because a lot of things we have and take for granted in the West is considered luxury in uh, third world countries. Yeah, uh, obviously, I don't feel maybe it's not best to call Iraq third world country. Uh, maybe some people tried very hard to make it one, but inshallah, it's going to bloom. Uh, Definitely, inshallah, inshallah, in the near future it will bloom. Um, 
Now, inshallah, unfortunately, uh, as usual, we're running out of time. Time is nothing but an enemy. <laughs> or it, it can be both sometimes, yeah? Uh, Double-edged sword. It can be an enemy or a blessing sometimes. Um, I just wanted to extract from you with regards to Hauza. What, what, what do you love about it? What, what's the more? What I love what, about What could Hauza. you pick out from Hauza that you love the what most? What I love the most about Hauza is the learning the the deep mysteries and secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deep mysteries and secrets of the Ahlul Bayt these this knowledge is you can't put a name to this knowledge because we are discovering things which the Ahlul have discussed 1400 years ago and we're mm. finding out now yeah. and it's just to think how much more did they actually know we can technically get a head start on the West on so many different avenues of sciences um, simply because we have the AMR. We need to do our best to translate so much of their work. Yeah, it's true. And this is what I love the most about the Hausa. The second thing I love about the Hausa, and um, this, is, this is a piece of advice to all the viewers as well, is that the Hausa isn't just a building uh, and you put an admission form in and you attend classes. The Hausa is you gaining knowledge that may be at home in front of a computer through some website. It could be through YouTube videos, um, programs on CDs, uh, like software. Or even if it's knocking on, your, on the door of your local sheikh and saying, look, can you teach me a book? And you sit with him one hour, two hours a week and go through a book uh, on aqaid or on akhlaq or on history. This is the beauty about Hausa. That's what it is. It's the learning process. For you to develop So you finish one book And now go to level 2 Of that book Level 3 Level 4 And go all the way up And improve and improve And, and, and uh, you know Deepen your understanding And your knowledge Of that subject That's awesome. what I love About the Hausa I sent him I agree with you That's a, that, that was the same For me as well uh, I felt like Alice In Wonderland I'm yeah. not gonna lie. <laughs> It was unbelievable Like the, the knowledge You acquire Just broadens Your understanding Just throws yeah. you To a deep hole where you, you, you start to see life from a different angle. Indeed. And understand the existence of reality is unbelievable. Indeed. It's Mashallah. unbelievable. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah, you go back. Uh, my dear uh, viewers, respected brothers and sisters, uh, unfortunately, once again, we've run out of time. I uh, would like to thank you, Sayyidina, for being with us and uh, obviously sharing your knowledge and experience. Thank you very much for having and, me. Uh, <laughs> Habib said that. And inshallah, um, hopefully we'll uh, be back again uh, soon and uh, discuss uh, another topic. Uh, until then, uh, remember us all in your du'as and do not forget to uh, always pray for the hastening of the reappearance of Imam Al-Hujjah Sharif. From me and uh, everyone else uh, from Imam Hussein team, would like to wish you all a lovely evening. And I uh, would like to end with a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.